The whole of Paris makes music. Yet we two are here in the Rue Saint-Georges, incarcerated, locked clams, craving breath. Do we crack our shells and take our chances? No. I'm weary. Through, no longer any taste for the swim. And what of her? Have I killed her too? Can she find again the wind that gave her life, that wooed kings, princes, leaders of men who thought Monsieur Sachs great and thought greatness would salve her wounds? The air that once coursed our bodies now mortifies and we may yet die. Sax and his saxophone strangling. The child is doomed to suffer. The child won't live. <laughs> what? What are you laughing at? Huh? I can't think of what you're laughing at. Was I? Stuck here with your wheezing. Not a penny for food. Haven't seen daylight for months. But what is that bloody smell? This, my golden one, is the pine forest. That old quack wanted to banish me to for the good of my lungs. Eh? Hey. Look, I'm not chancing it out there. So this little box will bring the forest to us. Of course. Yes. We'll breathe again. A deep putrefying potion, tar, creosote, see, see, onto these metal plates and into the box. Close this, turn the spring. You're burning horse hair. This will make my name. Long after we're both gone, they'll remember me, Adolf Sachs, inventor. Goudron here, my fresh air tar box. Oh, thanks. <sighs> no, I was I was laughing because you see. Even if I'm dying now with this devil curse in my chest, well, 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 remember when I was just two and I fell. fell down three flights of stairs. Head first, most of the way survived, you oh, see. But he didn't knock some sense. Then there you? was that milk and vitriol. Imagine knocking that back, eh? <laughs> then the lead, copper oxide and arsenic, blew myself up with gunpowder. Frying pan gun scalded me, drained by a roof tile. Yeah. Poisoned by lacquer fumes, drowned in the river, bit of bad luck, eh? You won't live, mother said. Still here, though. What are we going to do? Uh, do. Christ knows, my dear. Sit tight. Hope they don't find me. And me? I mean, what about me if the association get you? I'm squashed, scrapped, rivets prized apart, bits of me tarting up some old Ceruza phone. What? <gasps> no, 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 no. Your future's safe. Hmm. Believe me. Old Antoine Joseph didn't die then. A Adolf, sorry, Adolf, you'll know him as. That's what he called himself. You see, who knows why? Who cares? No, he didn't die with the lung business. 
And that was a laugh, what with him flogging his special breathing technique and singing and blowing things as the great cure-all. Another of his great inventions. 48 he was then. Another 32 years he went on. Much of it down the way. And I was with him every sodding day. He'd been through the mill before I came along, of course. Not all down to me. Far from it. My father, seeing as you ask. Yes, my father, who sent me on the trail, led to you. Instrument maker to the court of the Netherlands, you know. Never. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Joiner and cabinet maker for years, till, um... Waterloo. First Empire and Napoleon tumble, and that was that, with the chiselling and the... and the chipping. Factory chucked everyone in the streets, and he took to making serpents and flutes. Old hobby turned... Lifesaver. And he dragged you into it. Well, no, no, no. I had other things. Studied flute, clarinet. Pretty bloody good, too. <laughs> Goes without saying. The instruments, though, were so temperamental, so flawed. I knew I could make better. Back to Papa's workshop. Valves, keys, bore, tone. Improved the lot. Came up with a valve, the bugle horn, and this uh, single reed conical thing. Forget what I called it. Your ancestors, young lady. Oh, impressive pedigree, thank you. Bugles and things. Very impressive, thank you. And approved it. Made this bass clarinet. The old type was a devil to handle. Needed fingers like squid's legs. I sorted it out. Added a sound bell and there you go, no problem. Old Habeneck, remember him? Conductor. That's him, Paris. Of course. Said, bless him. Bit oily. A monstrosity. That's what the traditional clarinet is beside that of Adolf Sachs. He flung the old one out of the Paris opera, brought mine in. What? <laughs> Nothing <laughs> like being up on your uppers. What's gone wrong? No, no, wait. Reading through this newspaper one day, and I see that old De Costa, remember? No. Solo clarinet at the Paris Royal Academy. Sheltered upbringing, didn't mix with the light. Anyway, it said in the newspaper that he was off around Europe, showing off a bass clarinet that he'd come up with. Bugger that. Set off for Paris, I collared him. Don't tell me. <laughs> yeah, come, come on. Yeah. What? It's right around here, look. Face me. What? Shift this. You be De Costa. Me? Look mean, but a bit drippy. Right, on you go. Like so. Well, near enough. You see, I coloured him. I gave him the old sack stare, all hooded eyes and a bit mean with a moustache. <laughs> and I said to Costa, <laughs> I have seen your bass clarinet. I have appraised it with an expert eye. I have fingered it with a virtuoso touch, blown it with the lips of a genius. And it is but negligible in its improvement on the old monster. Come, you. I exceed you are the master and concur with your views, oh greatest Belgian of all. No, 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 no. I have my hands round your throat, you just squeal. Oh, that's more like the old you. Then I ripped through a rendering of the Huguenots on my instrument to push home the point. Then Madame de Costa appears and she said, Little. Monsieur Sachs is in. What? <laughs> Monsieur Sachs's instrument puts yours in the same bag as a kazoo. Quite, yes. Oh, uh, then the old. Deflated baboon leans over and whispers to me, she said, What? Yeah. The young virtuoso, that's what he called him quite rightly, made the old instrument sound rusted and seized when his fingers danced on the keys of the new and did I what? Yes, did they four octaves? No problem, stuffed him. Because you're happy in your work, aren't you? Or were, at least. Oh, this is just a uh, well, it's one of those spells. Yes, who's there? Who is it? I owe nothing, I mean harm to no one. Unless it's you, Bandmaster Saru, come to taunt me with your infernal copy. It's a saxophone, that's what it is, you cheat. Hello? Speak!
The day he first put me together, slotted, filed, and polished me into this demonic hiss of a shape. He knew he'd created something so new, so fresh. He'd created a new sound, a, a shock of sound with the power of the hammer still alive in the brass, the soft sound of a great, gentle arm men. And he was young then, the young man in his twenties with a fire burning, this explosive enthusiasm for me and my future. He took me to the Brussels exhibition, swaddled me in linen and, for a minute, left me in a dark room to await my public parturition. The work of a moment, a swift kick to my belly and a sliding across the floor, our first enemy split me apart. Adolf Sachs's golden dream, a leaden weight on the floor. So, without me, he showed his other creations in wood and brass and was called before the jury. I'll be able to repair the saxophone, of course. The metal may have been shattered by whatever drunken tinker lifted his foot, but it's the work of less than a week to have another in my hands. It would be our pleasure to see the instrument, Monsieur Sax, but you have offered us so many worthy examples of your work this year, it needn't worry you. I'm proud of the clarinets, yes. As you should be, vast improvements. But I fear the jealousy that met me here today will also drive me out of these doors and off to Paris. As you are aware, great competitiveness impels many manufacturers and Paris may be no different. Rather a stalked beast in the lush forest than a hounded animal in the rotten copse that is Belgium. This is a cultural backwater, gentlemen. And unless some recognition or reward for remaining here is forthcoming, I set off on foot, if needs be, to France. <laughs> that very recognition and reward is yours, Monsieur Sachs. Your standard of manufacture and invention has impressed us. Thank you. And were it not for your lack of years, how old again? 27 years, sir. Indeed, were it not for the fact that you are still so young, the supreme gold medal would have been yours. Would have been? If we were to raise you to such a level this year, what could we offer the next? <laughs> Another! <laughs> we award you the silver. Too young, I'm too young for the gold medal. The instruments are perfection. The tone of the bass clarinet look no one has manufactured such vowels. It's too young. Well, if I'm too bloody young for the gold, then I'm too bloody old for the silver. I set up for Paris after that, remember? I remember. Setting up here in the Rue Saint-Georges. I know. Hector Berlioz coming round, letting me dazzle him with my virtuosity. Keen, wasn't he? <laughs> when he left, he said, Tomorrow, I will reveal to you how my eyes have been opened today. Bit of a teaser. And the next day, in Debar, there it was, what he'd written in print, Adolf Sachs's musical instruments, magnificent achievements. Adolf Sachs. Skilled in the extreme, far-seeing, clear-sighted. Self-willed. Self-willed. Revolutionary. And a pretty fair turner, smelter and engraver. Heady days. Before the association turned their attentions to me. Ross. They want to kill me, you know. Ross. Oh. Do they kill us for their sport? Wild animals never kill for sport. Come. Let's into the lush forest where again we can breathe.